I think I've ever seen George Hell, someone uh, standing at the lectern with a smartphone, <laughs> setting up the... Listen, it's 2013. Uh, you know, we talk on the run. We talk at the bus stop. We talk, you know, some people talk on the way to the bathroom. But th this is the way it is. They're trying to get everybody they can, and it's very last minute. Because these motions only passed this morning. Let's listen. Mr. Manti, call your next witness. Thank you, Your Honor. We call Professor Scott Pleasance. <laughs> Raise your right hand, please. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you shall present will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, self you God? Thank you. Professor Pleasance, would you go ahead and make sure you spell your last name for us, please? It's Pleasance, P L A S A N T S. And I understand you are testifying remotely at the moment. Where are you at, sir? I'm in Delta, Colorado. Um, on the west side of Delta County, And Professor, can you still hear us okay? Yes. Professor, where do you teach uh, courses at? Central State College of Florida. How long have you been a professor there? Three years. Okay. And do you teach a course that is variously entitled Criminal Investigation? Yes, I do. Holding up a green and blue book, can you see it? Yes, I can. Is that a copy of uh, the course book that you routinely use in the course? Uh, that is one of the books, yes. Okay. And I've previously shown you what's State's Exhibit 201. Is this just a packet with some excerpts from that textbook? Yes, it is. Okay. Um, do you remember... <coughs> Do you remember teaching the course uh, in terms of 2010? Uh, actually, it's 2011, summer of 2011. Summer 2011, is that when you had a student named George Zimmerman? Yes. Okay. And specifically, simply as it relates to the course, what sorts of things do you cover? Uh, we cover uh, various aspects of criminal investigations, uh, uh, the duties of a criminal investigator, uh, some of the constitutional issues uh, surrounding criminal investigations and uh, basically different aspects of different types of crimes. Okay. Your Honor, I would move State's Exhibit 201 into evidence. Okay, 201 will come in as State's Exhibit 201. Okay. I made the previous objection where we just bring it back, Your Honor. Yes, pursuant to the court's, pursuant to the court's order. And Professor Pleasance, uh, the course that you teach, is that sort of an in-classroom course, or is it, a, is it a different type? No, this is a business learning course where we teach it online, and it requires activities by the student, and uh, it's based on the coursework in the book. I'm sorry, would you go ahead and repeat that starting, starting from the beginning? Yes, uh, the... Is it coming across? Go ahead. Okay. Could you repeat the question? Sure. Is this a in in room course or is it a different type? No, this is a distance learning course where uh, the students are online and I facilitate the class through the textbook discussions and a workbook exercise. Okay. And how do you facilitate those types of discussions? Um, basically, we have a discussion forum that is. Start again, uh, please. Yeah. Start start that answer again. Oh, we have weekly discussion forums starting with an introductory discussion where each of the students uh, introduces themselves, uh, what types of weeks are going for, what their career goals are, and then each week we have discussions. Okay. Well, those weekly discussions are based on different topics. Okay, and as I understand the excerpt in States Exhibit 201, there are chapters on uh, how to testify, how to testify as a witness, as well as on psychological or criminal profiling? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. No other questions, John. Thanks, Ross. Ben, ben his phone. Let's get it's, it's someone calling the destination, John. I get a 
just hit the client. Okay. Okay. I need to explain uh, for those who may not be too familiar with Skype what's going on here. And look, even the witness is laughing at this point. Uh, I think all of these people are calling either the prosecutor or they're calling the witness to say, dude, I see you on TV. It's, um, it's troublesome here. Um, I'm not sure they're going to be able to actually carry on with this, this Skype testimony. <laughs> and I'm only laughing because I've had this happen to me before. I want to bring in Jeffrey Tubin, our CNN legal analyst. Jeffrey, um, you have been a lawyer for a very long time. I have not seen a lot of Skype testimony. I've seen a lot of, you know, video testimony, but even you're laughing. I can see all these no, people it's, it's, calling. No, it's ridiculous. <laughs> It's actually a good oh. thing to be able to use Skype. I mean, it, it makes sure you, it, it gives you access to people who um, who may be unable to come to court. But you know, because this trial yeah. is tele televised, I assume these are just people who want to make trouble and. Well, it's either that or they want to call thing. to say, I'm watching you on television right now, and they're not realizing, uh, guess what, this is the line I'm using to be on television right now. So perhaps Correct. they'll be able to disable this in their preferences. But really, just quickly, uh, Jeffrey Tubin, I want to get a, a quick break in, but not before I get your feeling on this morning and the critical nature of the testimony suggesting George Zimmerman knows a thing or two about the law. Oh, oh now ahead, I thought Jeffrey. you want to go to a break. Yep. No, I, I actually break. thought... No, 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 I'm going to get it well, now and then that. after I'll put okay. a break in. Go ahead. No, no, you go ahead and talk now and I'll fit in the break well, after. Well, I, I so thought so this morning's testimony with Captain Carter, the instructor, what, he was an extremely appealing witness. I think the judge made a complete mistake by allowing it at all. I thought it was, it was irrelevant. It was confusing. It was not something the jury should have heard in that way. Um, in terms of the effect on this case, I doubt it will have a big, a big effect at all. It does show that Zimmerman knew something about the law, but in, on cross-examination, um, the, the defense showed that, in fact, self-defense was uh, potentially a broader concept um, than, than many people might have expected. But that's the kind of information I think should come from the judge in this case. I don't think you should have part-time law teachers giving legal instructions to the jury. Um, so I, I thought the, the, the whole testimony was irrelevant and shouldn't have been allowed at all. So, That's interesting. I had a totally different take on it. I had a completely different take on it. I thought, wow, look, there they go, showing that this guy could have easily got up after shooting uh, Trayvon Martin and crafted a very quick self-defense stand your ground theory in his mind and then started recounting it over and over and over again. I think seven different times now we've had accounts from, uh, from George Zimmerman, whether they were police accounts, statements that were written, or television interviews. Uh, Jeffrey, stand by, if you will, for a moment, live in New York City. I'm live in Sanford, Florida right now, where they are definitely trying to work out the bugaboo. Uh, from what we just witnessed. Obviously, the Skype line wasn't working too well because everybody's friends were calling in and interrupting the line. They're going to work out a speakerphone situation. We're going to fit in a quick break. While they get that all worked out, you won't miss a moment of any of the testimony back after this. Oh, and you know something else? We're going to get you back to Egypt. After